We've talked so far in class about several different types of regressions, linear regression, quadratic regression, cubic regression, uh, and we'll be adding more and more as the year goes on. So one thing we need to start talking about is how to know what type of regression is good to use. So far I've always told you, um, but when people go out in the real world and gather data, data, they don't know necessarily what the best model is to use. So they have to take their data, graph it, figure out what is the best model. So residuals are one way we kind of measure how good our model is. Um, now you would get this more correctly and more fully in a statistics class for advanced functions where we're just kind of roughing it a little bit and uh, using some shortcuts to, to give us a, a general idea of what's going on. Okay, now residuals are the difference between our data points and the estimated line of best fit. So, now several things I'm going to see in here aren't fully statistically correct, but again, I'm just trying to give you the general idea um, of, of where we're coming from. So, for example, if you look at this graph I have right here, the dots you see are our data, and the straight line is what we've estimated to be the line of best fit. So, just to give you an idea, residuals are going to come from the distance between the data and the line. So they're going to measure all those distances. In fact, the line your calculator usually does is called the least squares regression line. Um, okay, if you notice, some of those differences right there are going to be positive and some are going to be negative because some are above and some are below the line. So what they do to make sure they don't just cancel each other out is they actually square those numbers. And then they figure out what line they can draw that will give the smallest total amount of those numbers. That's why it's called the least squares, because they square these numbers, these differences between the data and the line, and then figure out the line that makes those differences the smallest. So that's the idea behind residuals. Residuals are the difference between our actual data and our estimated line of best fit. Now that's related to two things we use, and you'll see in the calculator in a minute. And that's R, which is the correlation coefficient. Now this only applies to linear models, absolutely only applies to linear models. And our calculator will pretty much only show R for linear models as well. But that gives you an idea of how well correlated, how well our data goes together. Correlated, it, correlation is kind of called go with itness or go togetherness. The idea is, you know, how well do these things fit together. And then R squared is called the coefficient of determination. So it's used to determine the goodness of fit for nonlinear models. Now this is where we get a little fuzzy. Um, in the statistics world, people don't necessarily always like that we use R squared this way. Uh, being fully mathematically correct, you should only ever use R squared for linear models. Um, but it still gives us a decent approximation and a decent guess when we're looking at other models. So we will use R squared as a way to try to figure out what a good model is. So I just want to give you a basic idea of how this will work in our calculator. So here I have my calculator. You notice I already have the plot on because I already have things plugged into my stat plot. Okay, so I just plugged in some data. And if you want to see how it looks, we go to zoom 9, which is zoom stat. So that's what my graph looks like. So I might think, okay, well I'd like it to be linear, so I'm going to try linear. So I'm going to go to stat, go over to calc, do number four for linear regression. Let me clear this out so we're not distracted by it. Let's try that again. Stat, calc, four is linear regression. And I want to graph it, so just so it'll do it for me, I'm going to go to vars, then y vars, then hit enter twice. Okay, so what that does is it automatically plugs it in for L1 for me. So I hit enter, and I get this. So you see here we have an R squared of 0.35. So it's not really doing a great job. What you're looking for, and I should have said this earlier, what you're looking for is something close to 1. R squared is basically the percentage of variation that's explained by the linear model. So you can almost think of this as like 35.8% or 35, 36%. So that's not very good. We want something closer to 1 or closer to 100%. But again, if they ever ask for the correlation coefficient, that's the R. That's this right here. That is our correlation coefficient. That's just a big word for that R. Now, 
You may be asking, where in the world do those R and R squared come from? That doesn't show up on my calculator. So let me show you how to turn that on. Um, some of the newer calculators, if you go to mode, it'll actually let you scroll down to a second page. And down there, it will have an option. It'll say set di stat diagnostics on or off. And you just turn them on. This calculator doesn't have that. So if, it, if yours doesn't, the way you can do is go to catalog. So you go to second, zero. And you can scroll all the way down, but it's going to be under D. So just click D right here. And then we're going to go down until we see where it says Diagnostics. Okay, so here it is. So you just go to Diagnostics on, hit Enter, Enter again. And so from now on, it should show you those R squareds when you do your regression. Okay, so we said this R squared was about 0.35. So that's not really good. Let's look at the graph and see what it looks like. All right, so hopefully you can agree with me. That does not seem like it explains the data very well. It doesn't seem like a very good model. Um, so let's just try a cubic model. I think you can kind of see we've got more than one curve going on here. So I think cubic might be a good thing to try. So let's try that. We go to stat. Go to calc. We can get, do number six for cubic. I want it to plug it in for me, so I go to vars and then y vars. So it plugs it into y1, and I get this. All right, now this r squared is 0.88, so this tells me that 88% of my data is explained by this. Now that's still not great, but it's a whole lot better than 35. So it, at the very least, does imply that this is probably a better model to use than the linear model. Again, this isn't fully statistically or mathematically sound. But for the purpose of this course, this is what we use to determine goodness of fit. So I think you could agree with me. That still may not be perfect, but it's a whole lot better and a whole lot closer to modeling the data than the straight line was. So that's the idea behind R and R squared. Um, what we're going to do is we'll be running different regressions and then comparing their R squareds and comparing what they look like on our graphs to see which one we think is the best. So keywords to remember, R is the correlation coefficient that will only be used for linear models. R squared is the coefficient of determination, and that's what we'll use for goodness of fit for linear and nonlinear models, actually.